John from caveofprogramming.com. Welcome to C++ for Complete Beginners. Um, I'm going to teach you C++, the programming language, from scratch in this course, assuming no knowledge of, of programming. And uh, in most of this course, I'm going to be programming in front of your eyes. And to get the most out of it, you should also uh, type in the code and play around with it a little bit after each video. In this particular video, I'm just going to talk about uh, what C++ actually is. And then in the next video, we'll, we'll get on to looking a bit more at installation, although you're going to have to do some Googling uh, to find the, the right stuff to install for your platform. And then we'll get on to actually coding stuff. Uh, so C++, it's a programming language that's been around for a long time, um, and it's going to be around a long time into the future, I'm sure. Uh, but um, before you start learning C++, there are some reasons why you might not want to learn it. And let's take a look at those first, although I don't want to discourage you. Um, some people are going to be better off learning a language like Java. And I, ha I have a massive free course on Java, uh, which you can find at caveofprogramming.com or Python, for example. Uh, C++ is considered challenging to, to learn. It's not the easiest programming language to learn, although you absolutely can learn it um, as a beginner. Uh, it's, it's easy to introduce horrible bugs into a C++ program. And uh, actually both of these uh, facts probably have to do with the fact that C++ doesn't protect you from yourself at all. Um, a C++ program just carries out your instructions. It doesn't second guess them and try to figure out what you might have done wrong. It doesn't try to protect you from yourself. It just carries out what you tell it to do. Uh, so when you're programming in C++, you have to be very careful. You have to think a lot. And um, it's very easy to create horrible bugs in there if you're not careful. It's even possible to screw up your computer if you do something really, really, really stupid. Although that's not normally something you have to, to worry about, but it is possible. Uh, C++ is um, it's often time consuming to write a C++ program. Um, that's, that's not necessarily the case, but uh, in my experience, uh, if you want to get something done, it's often quicker to use uh, what you might call a slightly higher level language like Java or, or Python that um, kind of does protect you from yourself more and gives you more sort of um, facilities that are immediately easy to use. So if you want to write, like, let's say, a desktop program, you can do it in C++ and it's going to be very fast usually if, if you do. But uh, it's, it's not so easy to write desktop programs in C++. There are other languages that, that make it easier. Um, it's, C++ is not truly platform independent. Um, you often can, with a minimal amount of work, get a C++ program to, to work on different uh, platforms, like, for example, a, a Mac and a Windows computer and so on. But um, equally often, it, it requires a substantial amount of work to get the same program to run on a completely different kind of computer. Uh, and that contrasts with Java, where with, with Java, there's a whole simulated computer basically running on your own computer. And your Java program will then run on that simulated computer. And that means um, that you can run a Java program quite easily on many different platforms, as long as they're you know, they're roughly similar, like they have big screens and keyboards or whatever. Um, but this is, this is not the case with C++. There's no simulate, simulated computer that's going to be the same for every, uh, every different kind of machine uh, with a C++ program. Your C++ program is running directly on your actual computer. And for that reason, it's not... Um, necessarily so easy to transfer transfer it to a different platform. But there, of course there are reasons why you might want to learn C++. So let, let's take a look at those. So C++ is very, very fast. Uh, you can write um, programs that are pretty much as fast as they can possibly be if you write good C++ code because, as I mentioned, 
there's nothing between the C++ program and your computer. It's directly issuing instructions to your computer. And that makes it very fast, at least if you uh, program well. And uh, by the same token, you can also um, access all the kind of low-level hardware type facilities of your computer in C++ if you want to, and if you understand them and you know how to do it. Uh, C++ will let you do basically anything with your computer that can be done with it. Uh, so because C++ is, is fast and it's, it's efficient, uh, and it, also in terms of memory, if, if you write it correctly, uh, as well as in terms of um, speed and processing power, that means that you can get a lot of processing done in a short time with a C++ program. Uh, so typically a C++ program is going to be much faster than Java or Python or something like that. Again, uh, with the caveat that you have to write it well in the first place. And that means C++ is good for things like high-end games, where, where you're trying to squeeze as much power as possible out of your computer. Although, of course, you have to be aware that uh, these really glitzy high-end games, kind of 3D type games, uh, usually have a team of people working on them. It's not so easy to write those things, including artists and so on. Uh, C++ uh, is good for artificial intelligence, where, you're, again, you're trying to do a lot of processing in, um, in a short amount of time on your computer, or for any kind of real-time application where you're having to do a lot of processing and get it done quickly and sharply. It's good for that kind of stuff. And for that matter, if you do write Windows kind of desktop programs in C++, uh, usually you can expect them to run very crisply and to be very responsive because um, C++ is fast. And you can write device drivers in C++ because, again, you have the uh, ability to access your hardware in C++. Uh, C++ also pushes you to understand your computer more. Um, a language like Java, uh, which is running on a, a simulated computer, in effect, a virtual machine uh, that runs on your own computer, insulates you somewhat from your actual computer. There's no such insulation in C++. So when you learn C++, you do usually uh, learn more and more about your computer. And uh, finally, learning C++ is a bit of a badge of honour among programmers. I mean, you'll get guys who say, oh, C++, why are you bothering with that? Java is so much nicer and so on. But I think even those guys are mostly secretly impressed if you know C++. Uh, so, um, yeah, it's, it's challenging, but when you've learnt it, you can really feel that you've really learnt something. Um, so. To get started with C++, there are basically two things you need. And uh, the, um, a lot of the best stuff is free, and I'm going to be using free stuff in this course. The first thing you need is, um, well, a bunch of software programs that together we collectively call the compiler. Uh, so um, you, you need to, you, we're going to write C++ programs as text files, uh, as what we call source code files. And then we use some software, the compiler, to turn those text files into a computer program. And there's a choice of different compilers. The compiler that I'm going to be using uh, for these tutorials is uh, the GNU compiler. And the, the G is actually pronounced in GNU, uh, I believe. Um, it's some sort of strange acronym. Um, and uh, that compiler is known as GCC, or also G++. Um, GCC was originally designed for creating a language uh, for compiling a computer language called C and um, later on extensions were added to C to create C++ and then uh, extensions were built into GCC to create G++ so now they're the same program you use GCC um, to compile C++ programs as well as C and just as a side note here, um, it seems like no one's really sure why C++ is called C++, but uh, in George Orwell's book, 1984, um, if something's um, really good, then you say it's plus plus, like, um, I don't know, 
uh, ice cream plus plus would be really good ice cream. And because C++ was built on top of a language called C, therefore you have C++, maybe that's the reason, I, I, I don't know. So um, I'm going to be using the GNU G++ compiler, and that runs on Unix type systems, and I'm using a Mac, which is a Unix type system these days. If you're using Windows, you can use MinGW, it's also free, and that stands for, I think, Minimal GNU for Windows. And it's the same compiler, just ported to Windows. Uh, there's also Visual C++. Um, that's, uh, that's very popular. Um, and you probably can follow these tutorials using Visual C++. I believe there's a free express version that lacks some features, but you can use that for these tutorials. But there are gonna be some differences, which I'll, I'll try to point out where I'm aware of them as you go along. Uh, but it's, if you're using Visual C++, it's going to look a little different. Things are going to be a little different. And occasionally, the actual syntax of the language, um, well, not the syntax, but some of the things that you have to type are going to be a little bit different with Visual C++. But I can highly recommend GNU, uh, the GNU compiler, G++, because uh, it's, it's widely, widely used in the industry, possibly even more so than Visual C++. Um, it's, 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 it's an industry standard and it's completely free and you can, you can absolutely rely on it. Uh, so um, that's the compiler, that's the software that turns your source code, the stuff you type, into a program. Uh, but you're also going to need an IDE, which this stands for Integrated Development Environment. And that's kind of the equivalent of you know, Microsoft Word, if you like for computer programming. So you'll type your, your source code, as we, as we call it, into the IDE, and then press a button, and that will, behind the scenes, use your compiler to create the actual computer program. And the IDE that I'll be using in these tutorials is the Eclipse CDT, uh, which stands for um, C++ Development Tool Chain or something like that, I'm not sure. Uh, so, and, and again, Eclipse CDT is free. Um, you can also use Visual C++, that's an IDE which comes with its own Visual C++ compiler. On Windows, um, a very easy option is to use code blocks, but I've never known anyone who uses code blocks professionally, but it, you definitely could. Uh, so that's another, as far as I know, free IDE that you could use. And uh, CodeBlocks makes it pretty easy to install um, a compiler as well. So if, if you end up having trouble getting started, CodeBlocks is um, maybe a good thing to look at. On top of that, you can use um, IDEs, uh, which are um, a somewhat lower level in a way, like Emacs and Vim. Uh, these are kind of um, editors that you can use for C++ programming, but it's a lot more complicated. And some people swear by these things, but personally, um, I'm not so keen on them. Uh, although I've, I've used um, Vim for a couple of years, but I, I prefer something that looks more like a nicely sort of colored um, uh, thing with buttons and stuff. Um, so I'll be using Eclipse CDT. Now in the next tutorial, we're gonna talk more about um, installation and things to install. Unfortunately, I can't give you specific instructions because it depends on your choice of compiler and IDE, and it depends on your uh, platform. So I'm using a Mac, but maybe you're using Windows or something else or Linux. So you'll have to do some Googling probably, but I will give you recommendations about what to install and uh, kind of point you in the right direction to hopefully get you started. So that's it for this tutorial, and until next time,